So in this video I just want to show you some uh, common usage tasks in Web Console. The purpose here is to do a quick overview of what you can do in Web Console uh, before we are diving into the depths of OpenShift administration. So in order to do that I want to be developer. As you can see in the upper right corner I am developer. And well let's develop something. I do want to see the developer view here as well. So I'm clicking get started and there we can see the developer perspective. So in the developer perspective you can see first time you enter it you get a quick overview. And the overview is different as well. So this is just based on what you need to do typically as a developer. And as a developer you are probably interested in the project that you currently are in and the workloads that are running in this project where you can see for each workload what is going on. So they really try to make it a nice graphical interface. I am going to start with the project and I create a new project and let's call it my deployment. And that is, no I don't want to automatically correct and the display name I just leave that as it is and there we go I click create. Now in the developer view as you can see we get a nice perspective of what we can do. Now what we see here is really based on a source to image. You know in OpenShift the purpose is to automatically build applications based on source code. So if you want to do that then typically you are going to use from git to build from git. I don't want to build from git I want to build from a container image. Building from a container image is the easiest interface, the most straightforward interface and the most Kubernetes like interface. People often ask what exactly is the difference between OpenShift and Kubernetes. Well uh, one main part of the difference is what you see here. The option to build from Git or easily from a Helm chart or from a Docker file. You don't see all that nice integration in vanilla Kubernetes but OpenShift is adding this kind of functionality. Now let me click container image and there we can see image name from external registry. We haven't talked about registries at all, external registry is fine. So let's just create an Nginx based deployment. You could see, I don't know if you noticed it, while I typed Nginx the interface was showing validated. And we can see more options like allow images from insecure registries. Normally if you run an application you want the application to be secure. Uh, but if you are going to run your application from a private registry that might be a, regi a registry that is not protected uh, with TLS certificates. And that is what this insecure registry is all about. You can even select a runtime icon. Yeah a runtime icon. Do we have an icon for Nginx? As you can see lots of icons are available and that includes Nginx as well. Is that important? No, but it's cool. Then we have the application name. So the application name is Nginx app. That is okay with me. You know we are in a dedicated project and the application name only needs to be unique within the project and I think it is. Then we have the name which is Nginx and the resource type. Now in OpenShift, kind of confusing, you can select between a deployment and a deployment config. Now what is the deployment config? The deployment config is the original way of running applications in OpenShift. And if you are using an older version of the OpenShift client, you will notice that deployment config is the default. Now if you will go more for the Kubernetes approach, the Kubernetes approach is offering the deployment. As we will later see these resources come from different APIs. If on the console you would use OC API resources to figure out where deployment and deployment config is coming from, then you will see that deployment is a Kubernetes API and deployment config is an OpenShift API. So right it is the deployment, we don't have any other details here. We do have the option to create a route to the application. Now create a route to the application that will expose the application automatically. And as you can see the advanced options are hidden right here. So if you want to specify further properties this is where you are going to do that. I don't need to do that, I am just going to click create. 
Now, what do we see? We see that the deployment is marked as red. Red, that's not good, is it? So let's click it. And if we click it, we get information about it. And the information is showing crash loop back off. If you see a crash loop back off, obviously that means that something did not work out all right. Now, what is it that did not work out all right? Well, let's click the view logs option. If we read the view logs option, then we see the user directive makes sense only if the master process runs with super user privileges. The thing is that in OpenShift, and this is a main difference with vanilla Kubernetes, in OpenShift, the default is the rootless container. Uh, so OpenShift will run your applications without root privileges. And here we can see that we have used an image that needs root privileges to run. So what is happening? Well, this image just can't run in an OpenShift environment. I will later teach you how we can use an alternative image, like the Bitnami Nginx image, which has been designed to work in a rootless environment. I will also later show you how to use SSC to configure that an image is capable of running, even if it's an image that uses root privileges, because we can change something in the permissions about it. Now, if you wanted to further investigate what is going on, then you can click and analyze. But that doesn't really make sense because we already know what is going on and why this is not working.